my wait for a while nga palangga welcome back to my live streaming so how can we do this oh my gosh like that right okay oh hello guys welcome back to my yt live streaming it's been so long that i did not have my video content regarding various topics to science health safety music and now let's shift to another topic highly academic but we can apply this in our day-to-day -day life and of course you can apply this to uh, formal language informal language like blah 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 so and so okay so i need to okay just relax for a while uh, let's try this okay let me write on the board please right okay check oh okay so our topic for today class happy friday to each and every one of us uh philippines hello world hello all parts of the world <laughs> this is your youtube content creator sutero science health safety and music it's good to be back right because most of the times i will be able to do my streaming my live streaming through fb so now it's gonna be yt and then sometimes simultaneous with fb and yt but now i am really really busy doing my yt vlog you get the point now our topic for today is let's try this because you know a while ago i just erased the ink in this whiteboard then i found difficult what solvent or what liquid i will be able to use in order to remove uh, permanent markings or writings in this whiteboard so basically i have an idea because uh, when i was in high school we experimented a lot about solvents and liquids then we tried to react one liquid over the other i found out that acetone is the best for ink removal things like that if you try to put that in a whiteboard like that but i found difficulty also what kind or what another or what alternative liquid that could erase and then i found out really through research just five minutes ago i found out that paste or toothpaste also can erase the ink so i'm very very happy see, as you can see it's very clean right so it's gonna be toothpaste and then you mix that with a little bit of water and then you know the permanent ink markings on your whiteboard will be removed so an evidence a very clear evidence i'll just not show to you the how i erased it but if you try it by yourself then you can do it also okay things like that for the very very first time i just i knew it that it's gonna be toothpaste also okay and then it's also declared there that we can remove also permanent ink by dish washing solution but i'll try that last two or three weeks ago but it was not removed immediately i think i lost my patient at that time maybe it will be removed because based in my research now it will, it will really remove then i found out also it will be slowly removed by having a strong force by applying a tremendous force with the board while you erase that it will be removed really also but if you try to remove that in a very smooth way without any extreme force applied then it will not be removed actually because i really tried the two the toothpaste and the dishwashing soap solution just like a fairy right so if you try to remove that in a ink uh, in the board permanent ink it will be removed also i'm just not patient though it's just totally the same but you know the the removal of uh, permanent ink uh, by using toothpaste is quite fast compared to the removing the ink permanent ink by means of a dishwashing solution or liquid solution things like that i think but it depends on the ingredients right so how can we do that 
because it's really formulated to remove the stain, the dirt, like that, the ink or whatever. But for now, three alternatives, we have the acetone, but acetone is not common here. We don't have acetone in our bakala. Instead, we have the toothpaste. So the toothpaste could be anything or any kind. But I'll use the, what's that kind of toothpaste I have. I will get that, I will show it for you. Okay, so, uh, okay guys, it's here. This toothpaste is Sensodyne. So Sensodyne is the most preferred recommendation of the doctors as a toothpaste clinically to, you know, to repair the damaged gums. G-U-M-S and also your teeth for the repair of the muscles and the tissues and the gums or you know the rigidity and the strength of your teeth okay teeth the plural of tooth okay if it's only one tooth if so many teeth right okay things like that so it's gonna be sensodyne repair okay anyway or anyhow you can also use another brand if you want like Colgate, Close Up, or whatever, or Pepsodent, or anything, right? But I love Sensodyne because I always use this for a long time, okay, until now. Because, because this is highly recommended by the doctor, okay? I never shift it to another brand as of now, okay? Based on my experience, really. So if I found that, oh my gosh, I have really small tooth pain or toothache, then it will be removed suddenly by applying this type of toothpaste. I just don't know, maybe it's just like a, a psychology or whatever, but it's really true. You can try this also by yourself, right? Okay. Okay, guys. Our specific topic for today is idioms or idiomatic expressions. Okay, by the way, it's not really a requirement to use idiomatic expressions in formal language or either in also informal language, both informal or formal language. So you need to associate that sometimes if you try to really put a mastery on your message. I mean, what do you mean by that? You need to let them think what you are talking so that it will create uh, excitement and thrill or a technique also to be used by the speaker in order they will be stay a little while in your speech to listen with you because the more you keep on talking uh, statements that are not easy to understand the more they will ponder a lot what's that all about or they can spend uh, a little bit of time for that and they will be hooked in you or shall we say they will be captivated by the way you talk then sometimes you really emphasize the idioms or you really need to talk about idioms as a part of your speech or idiomatic expressions okay things like that what's the difference between superstitious belief and idiomatic expressions okay it's actually it's not the same okay it's totally not the same because you know superstitious belief is only a myth m-y-t-h meaning that's gonna be a false claims meaning fictitious okay or in another way around let's say if you try to make to have a profound vocabulary that is uh, really up absurd a b s u r d meaning untrue usually discovered by, by our uh, forefathers or in the past long long time ago then we, we need to apply that until now nowadays because we believe because that's our lolo and lola you know telling us about that but actually it's not true okay so it looks like a subject for illusion okay things like that or you're just like hallucinating for something in which not subject to reality you get the point, so it's gonna be like that. Or you have, you know, a present uh, premonition that is not actually true. Okay, premonition, right? <laughs> you get the point? Okay, so, but by the way, premonition is more largely applied to dreaming something, which is not true, but it's also, you can also really uh, a little bit 
okay as long as it's linked that's gonna be like this is all about language you don't have to be direct as in you need to connect everything so as long as you can speak and interrelate with each other and you know how to construct your you know communication well then it will be okay you get the point there's no such strict rules and regulations in your speech so you can play around you can manage your atmosphere the way how you communicate the way how you deliver your speech to the public or it could be in a closed environment and or in the open environment depends on the venue right things like that okay there's no such rule to follow really trust me okay the moment you will step on the stage as long as you have the guidance what to talk what is really or what are really your topics to be discussed then bam you can start with it you get the point okay so the importance here really is the flow and sync okay that the point how fluent you are in talking then connecting the words every time not necessarily very very intact as long as you are talking also with sense every word came out from your mouth will be easily be understood things like that what do what do i mean for that <laughs> Meaning to say, uh, you understand even though uh, it's not really that uh, easy, simple, then you can really understand that through, uh, let's say, you're going to be researching for that later, things like that. Okay, now our topic for today is idioms or idiomatic expression. Okay. Love. Wait. Okay. Idiomatic expression. Okay, let's say I will say, I will say, for example, only I will say, uh, uh, hit the hay. Oh my gosh, I want to hit the hay because I was tired yesterday of so many pressure or a lot of pressure about my work, then I cannot really uh, sleep well. Okay, things like that. You get the point? So, what is hit the hay? Okay, so you're gonna be, uh, you are very, very tired and then later on you will sleep. You get the point because uh, it's very tiring. Being tired. Tiring or tiresome or, you know, so due to tedious tasks, heavy works, and blah, 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 so and so. Okay, hit the hay. Uh, one, hit the Okay, like that. Now I'm gonna introduce you another example with, for instance, another example that is saying, I could eat a horse. Oh my gosh, it's very impossible. It's insurmountable to eat a horse, right? We cannot eat the horse unless it will be cooked. Okay, but not all of us also will eat horse. Okay, it's, in, it's strange, right? <laughs> so, oh my gosh. So, if you will eat the horse, then it looks like it's also amazing. Okay, you get the point? Things like that, meaning it's rare, it's unusual for somebody to eat a horse. So, oh my gosh, I could eat a horse because last two days, I don't even eat my meals because I underwent uh, fasting. Underwent her because it's past, it's happened in the past. It's not undergo, right? It was under, I underwent fasting and I took or I had to pass fasting, things like that. Oh, so he was, I used to say, I could eat a horse now. What do you mean by that? So it's not, a dramatic expression is not literal, it's not word for word, okay? You cannot even uh, have the direct meaning in each word in a paragraph or in a sentence. Usually there, these are two sentences, one sentence minimum, or sometimes three like that, or phrases, a group of phrases, things like that, in which the meaning is uh, not word for word, not literal. There's an underlying or meaning hidden, okay, meaning out of it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I could eat a horse because I don't have my breakfast in the morning. Meaning to say, I'm starving, okay. What's the, what do you mean by starving? I mean, you are really uh, hungry, severely, or extremely hungry. Okay, tremendously hungry. Things like that. Okay, and then you are, uh, oh, I'm starving. I'm famished. Well, that's very deep. 
Spanish. I'm so, you know, ravenous today. And I'm also pickish. Okay? Then if you try to apply this very deep words, it looks like you will be you will be crazy. Right? If you try to dig it out. But this is not really a requirement. This is only uh, very useful if you try to be in the journalism, if you are also trying to be in the media. If your work also requires you to do that, especially if you are an editor, you are an author of a book, things like that, or your job requires enormous writing, things like that, okay? So it is really required to have a wide vocabulary in the first place. And also sometimes it's very useful also if your job requires you to do that. For example, if you're really uh, a document uh, creator, things like that, or you are in the documentation process sometimes also is related, especially if you're trying to make a policy, a procedure, rules and regulations, or just like a system. So everything will be written in English, right? So it would be also professional to use not simple and basic terminology. So things like that. It would be also necessary, but not a requirement. It's only uh, optional if you really want or not, things like that. Or really, what we call this one, uh, conventional in nature, or you can say also that it's not quite mastered for everybody. You get the point? <laughs> Ganon. Okay, number two. Okay, let's say I'll be able to have uh, kill uh, two birds in one time. Oh my gosh, this afternoon I'll be able to call to Riyadh City because I will kill two birds with one time. Or I will, say, I will kill two birds in one time. Things like that. So it's very like, oh my gosh, what's the mystery of that word all about? So. Oh, so when you go there, it's very clear your apartment already this afternoon will be going to your city. Then it's going to be like you go to the mall and then inside the mall you will be able to do a lot of things. Things like that. Or for example, if you try to plan to deposit money for your loved ones in terms of, uh, you know, uh, a teller there or padala, whatever, <laughs> okay, or a bank things like that, then you also try to do another thing. You may be able to eat in a restaurant because you are craving for something, uh, exquisite food or some toast food that you never taste that for quite some time because you are very, very busy. And another reason for that also that you are very, very far from the city. Let's say you are 85 kilometers away from the city and you don't have time to eat a deliciously prepared world-class food offers in a restaurant things like that you get the point so it's gonna be like that okay oh my gosh so oh my gosh is an expression as you can notice me when i talk i have so much expression because this can help me to construct you know my communication effectively because if i don't use this sometimes i will be lost i will be stopped and then you know there's a lot of pause uh, 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 like that to avoid that i need to have expression i have the feelings i have the emotions so that i could really be intact all the time with my topic things like that and i will be able to speak fluently okay whether it's face to face or it could be in an online social media, vlogging, whatever, things like that, right? You know what I mean. Okay, so it's going to be like that. So, oh my gosh, this afternoon or this, this evening, I will be able to go to Jeddah, even though that is too far, but I will try my very best to do my everything <laughs> just to reach there. And I will be able to kill two birds in one time. Things like that, okay? So that's the geometric expression. Meaning aside, for example, if your uh, appointment really is to visit your, let us say, you have relative there working also in another uh, region within the kingdom, then you will be able to see uh, to say something like that. Oh, I will be I will be visiting her, things like that. And at the same time, you will do karaoke, singing, dancing, eating. You do a lot of things or tasks or whatever, right? So that what it means of the idiomatic expression, okay? I'll kill two birds in one time. 
You get the point. Ganon. Okay. So, kill two birds in one time. Okay? Like that. Oh, my gosh. Number three is very easy. It's going to be break a leg. Okay. Oh, I have this very diligent friend of mine. Oh, I will wish him to break a leg because he will be able to perform a championship round this night and I will be able to cheer him up in order their team will win this night. Right? So things like that's an example of break a leg. You got a point. So what is an idiom break a leg? So anybody? Okay, from my virtual audience today. Hello. Hello to my classmates, my elementary uh, classmates, batchmates, and also my high school and college classmates and batchmates. Are you listening with me? Especially to my avid viewers in social media and in my online world, actually, in vlogging. Thank you so much for the moral support you bestowed to me. Thank you so much. Okay, going back to that topic. Break a leg. So what's that all about? I will check also the people who chatted me today. Excuse me for a while. One minute. Dagiga. <laughs> okay. It's gonna be like, oh my gosh. Dagiga meaning, dagiga meaning wait for a minute. Things like that. Okay. So break a leg meaning good luck. Okay, meaning you, have, you will wish passively uh, for the team in order for them to win. So meaning uh, one way or giving an example or let's say a moral support to boost their you know, confidence to win. So meaning wishing them passively to win the championship round. This evening could it be a basketball game, a hockey game or whatever, right? So it depends on the situation what you are trying to use in a particular moment. <laughs> what if you can apply this for a particular moment? Oh my gosh! Oh, my nephew also is joining a competition tomorrow, things like that. Oh, JK, break a leg, things like that. So it looks like negative, right? Because nobody does to break your leg. You get the point, but actually the meaning is opposite. That's why you need to be careful to use idiomatic expression. Because it's sometimes it's the opposite of the word. Really extremely opposite. See? Break a leg. Meaning you don't have the leg anymore. You get the point? So how can they play the cricket already and the basketball if they don't have the legs anymore? I'll say break a leg. Right? So how can they achieve the championship or the award or become, become the champion if that is the case. So many it's an opposite meaning uh, good luck, wishing you uh, a good uh, atmosphere of your um, game this afternoon or this evening so that you will win, things like that. Okay, break a leg meaning wishing passively and then meaning being optimistic, okay, like positivism, invoke positivism. Okay, you get the point. So that's another invoke. Okay, and then break a leg meaning to say good luck. A good break a leg for your exam tomorrow i hope you will pass things like that okay that's break a leg okay number four i will give you common that we normally practice also in general for today let's say benefit of a doubt okay so this is the uh, idiomatic expression that is always applied also because we have also some or a few uh, idi idioms or idiomatic expression that we always also apply apply in our day-to-day -day life, things like that. But we don't know really that it is an idiom. You get the point? So that's a figure of speech. Okay, just like a personification, hyperbole, like a parable, uh, a pun, dili pun ha, a pun, pun, P-U-N. Okay, a simile, things like that, or uh, any la, a sarcastic statement or whatever. Okay, this belongs to figures of speech. You get the point? Okay, so benefit of a doubt, Charis. Okay, benefit of a doubt. Okay. So, in the benefit of a doubt, meaning it looks like not really that too much idiom because. You say you will try to doubt something, then upon doubting, you will also benefit out from that. 
You get the, the point? So, but the real meaning really for this is uh, you trust or you believe somebody or someone else or you just trust for any situation or circumstance, but you just uh, give them a chance to continue even though you are doubting, things like that, okay? Even though you don't know if it is true or not, things like that. So you still uh, invoke them to continue. Even though you have already uh, initial hypothesis that no, it's very impossible. Do they accomplish that one? But that's only in your mind. You don't have to utter that. Okay? You don't have to speak loudly. It should be in your mind only. Okay, let's give them a chance. Let's see if they will do this, do that, like that. That's benefit of a Tao. Okay? Even though sometimes it's very impossible for them to to do that or to materialize the task or whatever or to make it feasible things like that then you will say also in the benefit of a Tao let's try to check this out things like that okay so sometimes also you have a hint already that it's impossible but in benefit of the Tao you still give them a chance to do that okay things like that okay so uh, trusting or believing uh, any situation or circumstance or a person things like that even though you don't know yet if it is true or not the benefit or, or even though you you know already it is true based on your subconscious mind meaning in your intuition okay meaning to say in your instinct understanding at a quick moment okay that's called subconscious mind or in your instinct things like in your instinct cognitive ability Things like that. You get the point? So, in benefit of the town, I think they can make it. Things like that. Even though you are uh, uh, believing that they cannot make it because they are very weak, like that, and it's impossible that in their group there's no such uh, uh, intelligent things like that, okay? But uh, in the benefit of doubt, you will just uh, give them a chance because who knows? They studied a lot, things like that, and they prepared a lot, even though they are not. Uh, genius and they are not really adroit or prudent or wise or what or any superlative of being smart okay vocabulary so even though they are not like that but it's possible they can do that also right so in benefit of a tab things like that that's our example number four okay number five also i'll give you the common one okay the rule of thumb rule of thumb Okay, so what do you mean by rule of thumb? Okay, it's gonna be like, oh, that's basically the rule of thumb, so, so they cannot break it. Okay, for example, uh, it's a golden rule that uh, Moses established in the rack when our Almighty God gave, gave him an instruction to spread the commandments. Okay, you get the point, so to spread the what do you call this one the statutes you know statutes s t u s t a t u s t a t u t e meaning to say uh, uh rules uh palaces commandments so that the people will follow that so that they will be saved after death things like that we could the point so that they will not be in harm from you know unrighteousness wickedness okay errors flaws, imperfections, okay, whatever, okay, any temptations that the world offers regularly, okay, you get the point? So there's a lot of temptations within this planet Earth. That's why our Almighty God created uh, a universal uh, golden rules, or a commandment, the Ten Commandments. So it's going to be like this, the rule of thumb really is we don't steal, because it, it can harm other other people, we are stealing their properties, things like that. So it's gonna be the rule of thumb, or the, it's gonna be the rule of common sense, or through uh, typical or we don't say a universal agreement or universal consensus rules. What's consensus? Meaning agreement. You get the point. Things like that. So, oh my God, the rule of thumb really is you need to wear our PPE before we enter the plant. The rule of thumb really is, especially if you are a beginner, or especially if you are a neophyte, or especially if you are callous, or especially if you are first timers, or especially if you are a new employer in that particular plant, is to follow the rules and regulations. 
Okay, I maximize the, the term beginner, neophyte, first timers, meaning uh, first time of work or new in that particular job or in a particular factory. So it's gonna be like that. Okay, so the rule of thumb really is to follow the rules and regulations, of course. Okay, they have to follow the we have to attend the safety orientation before exposing themselves to the potential hazards and associated risks in different or numerous scope of works in the plant sites or in the factories, things like that. You get the point? So that's rule of thumb. T -U, this one, T-U-H-U-M-B, uh, along with the, the, you know, the index finger, the ring finger, things like that, the middle finger, and the small finger in our fingers, right? <laughs> Our one hand composed of five fingers, and the first one is the thumb. So T U D H U M B. Okay, so rule of thumb. Okay, it's a rule of the majority that experience universally according to the common sense. Okay, so it will it must have sense. That's why common sense. So if you do the kind, if you follow that kind of rule that is also useless and futile, okay, that has no substance at all. So it's not you will never use this because this is substantial. Okay, you know substantial meaning essential, vital, fundamental things like that. Meaning to say it has always have sense. That's why common sense. You get the point. It has to do something with our eyes, our hands the sense of smell, the sense of feeling, the sense of the vision, or visual impact or whatever. Okay, the rule of thumb. Number six, okay. Okay, up in the air. Oh, very useful this one, I love it. Up in the air. Okay, like that. Actually, I saw uh, a notice board or an announcement that there there will be an amateur singing contest in the next barangay, but I'm still up in the air to join. Oh, another thing also, I think there will be a, a cricket tournament in our anniversary, but I am still up in the air if I will join or not. So what is up in the air? Meaning to say, you are still in the process of having the decision. You are still undecided. You are still uncertain if you will join or not. Not confirmed to join or not. Even though initially you are planning, but not yet confirmed if you will join or not. So undecided. It's up in the air. Okay. Okay, we'll be able to study uh, figures of speech this night because I want to learn a lot of figures of speech because I am more of the parts of speech in English language. Then basically I always study also about figure speech, figure of speech by the way, but I am still up in the air. Oh, so you mean to say up in the air meaning undecided or you are still in the process of deciding. You get the point? So up in the air. Mm, so there are also idiomatic expressions that are close to the real meaning of the words. So I'll give you an example. For example, I will say, uh, you will go to a certain uh, uh, exclusive party of elect people. What do you mean by elect? Meaning elegant people, uh, class A in the society. Most of them are businessmen, influential people. Think celebrities, leaders like that, or you know, multi-talented individuals, recording artists, whatever. So they are the highest form of uh, people. We need to say lofty, higher levels. They are lawyers, blah blah blah, so and so. Okay. Oh, I will never go that things like that. Okay. So since the admission is not free, okay, that is uh, not free for everybody. Then you will say. Oh my gosh, okay, I will not attend that uh, very expensive activity because can cost an arm and a leg for me. Well, can cost an arm and a leg for me. So what is can cost an arm and a leg for me? Too much linking verb, right? 
sometimes this linking verse also you know it will push you to sound uh, very awkward in speaking right your tongue will be twirled me also most of the times i'm always like that also especially i'm talking too fast and there's a lot of linking verbs okay and uh that sometimes like also uh, you know what i mean right you know what i mean the linking verbs and also sometimes the you know the articles in english the 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 ah uh, Okay, you got, you got the point. Things like that. So, mga inana siya. Okay, so, cost an arm and a leg. A lot of ah. That's why. It's very difficult to remember. Cost an, cost an arm and a leg. Okay. Like that. Oh my gosh. The price of basic commodities cost an arm and a leg. I cannot afford to go everywhere because the prices of this uh, gasoline are so high for today. Oh, things like that. But it costs an arm and a leg, meaning it has a very high cost or very expensive. Oh, I cannot eat that delicious food for now because our salary is not yet coming and then cost an arm and a leg for me. Uh, meaning to say expensive and high cost. That this is what we mean of an idiom or an idiomatic expression, cost an arm and a leg. Okay, so it looks like closer because this there is a word cost that is your identification, an idiomatic expression that is a little bit uh, have a hint that you can really understand because of the term, but still idiomatic expression. You get the point because of the supporting phrases here or words arm and a leg there's no connection arm and a leg regarding the cause how come that is your body parts and then there, there's a connection with the cause so if you try to be strict word for word it's really far also but thanks god there is the word costs in the beginning of an idiom that's our identification or our hint our clue oh it's easy for us to understand things like that you get the point Ganon. Number eight, uh, hang in the air. Hang in the air. Oh, I really lost last night during oratorical contest. Okay, I'm hanging the air someday. Like that. Okay, so you get the point. So hang in the air, meaning you will, you will try again. You will never give up. Things like that. Okay. For example, oh my God, uh, I really failed in the licensure board examination. So I think I'm gonna hang in the air. Oh, things like that. So we need to say, trying my best again, try again, and then never give up. That's hang in the air. Usually you can uh, hear this in a movie this idiomatic expressions but you will never focus on it because you are focusing on the lessons you learned out of it or from their actions you will be thrilled and excited by their actions right especially in the climax part of the movie but actually somewhere along the lines of their conversation you will hear also few or some idiomatic expression and you are not really interested for that because you are focusing on the special effects the actions of the actors and actresses you are focusing on the scene. You get the point in your visual, visualization of the scene to scene of the movie, not on the words. Okay, you got the point. So if you're really interested in English language, you have to consider everything. But sometimes also, you, not really sometimes, if you really understand also what they are talking, but sometimes you ignore, uh, you know, specific complex terms in which you understand because that is not your purpose. Your purpose is to, to be entertained, okay? And to be amused. Uh, especially if that is your pastime and watching movies, right? Then you are not focusing with the t deep terminologies and these idiomatic expressions, okay? Things like that. So if you try to be uh, focusing always all the time in the scene, then it would be wonderful, it would be marvelous to focus also a bit, I'm not telling you, all throughout, or I'm not telling you to thoroughly focus on the idiomatic expressions and the grammar and the vocabulary but in try a bit meaning to say little only if you also try a bit in focusing the english language and the idiomatic expressions as well then it would be marvelous 
things like that. Wonderful, delightful, things like that. Look at the point. This is our number eight. Okay, things like that. Okay, so hang in the air. Okay, hang in the air. Okay, number nine, we have on the ball. Okay, on the, what's on the ball? Okay. You know, guys, I really failed in that examination because in the past, I am not really attentive. I'm on the ball with my teachers discussed extensively. Mm. Extensively na naman. Okay, you got the point of grammar, right? Uh, vocabulary. Okay, say so on the ball. What's on the ball? Meaning you are not paying attention. Again, it's separate, right? It's totally not the same because when you said the ball, the ball is keep on rolling, right? Rolling up, down, up, down, up, down. So, meaning dynamic. There's a massive velocity out of it. When you try to push, when you try to toss, or let us say, if you try to throw the ball, dribble the ball, or whatever, it creates magnitude, velocity, speed, and acceleration. And at the same time, also, there is a gravity. You get a point? So, how can you are not paying attention? So, we need to say it's totally the reverse. Oh, you, oh I, I'm on the ball. That's why I did not get what he tried to emphasize in his topic last night. It was so interesting, actually, but I was on the ball. Oh, meaning, you are not paying attention. Meaning, you are thinking of another, and then it's really interrupting to you at that time. It really impede your focus and concentration. What do you mean by impede? Meaning it really interfere. It really obstruct. It really block. Okay, you get the point? So it, uh, it destroys something like that or stop or quite no nuisance to your uh, ability in listening for that particular topic. Okay, blockage or interference. When I say impede, okay, that's why we have the term stampede. That's closely related. It's very crowded already because it has to do something with blockage, okay, impedance. It impede a lot crowding, okay. So that's stampede and impede, okay. But impede meaning is to interfere. Another term for that is to hinder, okay, hinder. H i n d e r. Oh, it will hinder my objective. It will block. It will interfere. But impede most used at all the times in science. So, you know, the context. Or let us say in a movement, with a velocity, with a speed, and physics. We got a point. So, on the ball. Oh my God. You know, I had my teacher in lesson, in singing. Okay, but I'm on the ball always. That's why when I perform on stage, my performance is so lousy. Lousy. L O U S O. I mean, not snappy or not lively it's gonna be like that or my performance really is dry it's not really captivating uh, so when you sing nobody will be enchanted things like that you get the point it's not enchanting it's not uh, it's not exciting it's not captivating it's not mesmerizing you get the point so, oh i was not mesmerized by your performance because that was too poor Wow. So, but, but by the way, if you are in the professionalism world, or you don't have to use extreme negative. Avoid that one because it's not good, all right? So it's not really that good to use always negative word all the time, okay? Sometimes it's necessary, you will use that as a sarcastic statement. That, that's understood because that is, uh, you know, that is joking, uh, giving you more, things like that. But if you try to uh, utter that seriously, it looks like very, you know, uh, insulting. Uh, you can provoke other people, feelings and emotions. You do, you sometimes sometimes have to hide that, okay. But you you use another word instead of a very negative word. That it also implies the same thing. But the effect and the impact it's not insulting. You can do that by the way to correct somebody. But you need to use a word that is more professional and the inf the impact really is not really. Uh, provocative, meaning it, it's not leading to upset people 
uh, it, it doesn't lead to you know disgust people it's not disgusting things like that okay it's not really that harsh you get the point it's not really that censure with re review or uh, use all the negative terms all over the world as long as it's not like that you got the point so on the ball not paying attention okay number 10 so i may introduce you okay remember that i could eat a horse okay i could eat a horse okay i love this i could eat a horse because <laughs> it looks like uh whimsical you know what is it whimsical in english it looks like whimsical it looks like funny it looks like ironic it looks like um uh, jocular things like that so we to say these are all funny meaning uh, katawanan it looks like clumsy c-l-u-m-s so these are the vocabulary of the one word humor or the joke actually you can use a lot of terms for it sometimes you can use also it's a comic that's why we have comical skits because sketch because comic is being funny that's another term also of joke and humor again we will maximize the vocabulary joke humor whimsical comic clumsy jocular you get the point these are the six terms that you'll be able to exchange these terms if you try to make uh, an article if you write something or blah 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 whatever if you write a poetry or a poem if you write a novel or a short story usually it can be applied to a fiction story fiction not subject to reality that's why we have fictitious because it came from the word fiction not true you get the point or a myth in yth myth a fictitious and fiction these are all absurd what do you mean by absurd or a bluff meaning to say not true you get the point things like that unreal okay you get the point someone at siyang may tabu i could eat a horse oh my gosh i could eat a horse because i'm very uh, busy a while ago meaning to say you are very hungry you are very uh, you are excessively hungry you get the point or extremely hungry or severely hungry or enormously hungry or tremendously hungry or you can also say that extensively hungry so there's a lot of adverbs to be used right if you try to pay that with a noun so this is now what we call collocation in english you get the point if you pair the adverb and the noun okay actually there's a lot of collocations it depends later we will be able to talk also that to discuss to you what are collocations huh because most of the times we use that also in our uh, everyday communication oh i cannot go in the city because there's a heavy traffic oh i will not go there instead i will sleep oh, so heavy traffic that's also a collocation okay an adjective and a noun heavy is an adjective traffic is a noun so things like that you get the point so everyday speech a lot of collocations okay in english language but we often not understand that that is really a collocation and this you will study a lot in english language okay you get the point things like that in everyday speech so we call them as a colloquial statement colloquial statement or if you say that uh, in a very concise manner you will say oh that's really a colloquy colloquy things like that meaning a colloquy is a words or words or group of words that are normally expressed in the day-to-day -day life oh i'm hungry uh, colloquy or colloquial statement you get the point so i remember every time when i heard this word i always remembered the brave woman in the philippines mom maryam defensor santiago because sometimes when she talked really i really researched because she is very eloquent she is really a persuasive speaker okay it's gonna be like that and very fluent with articulation and then you'll be interested upon listening to her and you know sometimes uh, i can gain something from her the way she in a shaped words and the way she talked in TV or, you know, 
wherever she also writes anything in the magazine or whatever or a book because she is very talented she can write she can speak blah 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 so and so okay because she is a lawyer okay you got the point a lawyer so okay see madame the late mary saint Miriam the construction shallow okay so like that a color k oh, diva. i could still remember the the way how she pronounced it in tv okay call k like that my gosh i could still remember because it's very long time that i really learned this word also in my high school there are words for today that i mentioned that i already gained that in my high school and elementary i just flashed back that here now in, when i'm working okay that's the advantage of being not on the ball <laughs> when somebody speak i use on the ball but i say not on the ball meaning i'm paying attention because on the ball is an idiom refers to not paying attention oh okay but i say not on the ball meaning i'll pay attention i'm attentive okay to prominent speakers in the tv right or eminent or renowned speakers in the tv mostly of them are uh, journalists like katya santos uh, a journalist in a newscaster in ABCBN before. I love her enunciation, by the way. Okay, and also Lauren Legarda before. I love her the way he talk. And even up to now, but sometimes she is diverted to another thing. Okay, but when she was before in the media in uh, ABCBN, the uh, the World Tonight, right in the news. I love the way she enunciated words. Okay, things like, just like Katya Santos, okay, and then Miriam Defensor Santiago as well, and also David Seldran. Okay, David Seldran is a, a speaker, a host in different, uh, you know, uh, academic oriented programs and shows like uh, Battle of the Brains, Quiz Bowls. Like, I love him so much the way also how she enunciated words during those times in rpa9 so i always watched a lot of uh quizzes competition in that show okay i love to listen some of my you know my uh, learnings also come there when i watch and i solve also like that because i love really quizzes okay i love that type of programs quiz bowls academics like that I'm not into superficial and shallow things just like only dancing, dancing, like that. I'm not into that. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. If I found it, it's very mabaw. I will never watch it. I cannot gain something that is more profound and it could in contribute to my cognitive learning. Maybe it's just me, right? Okay? So it depends on the type of personality of the person. Because most of the times also, you are just enjoying by watching alone. Even though we did not gain anything. As long as we are entertained. Me, I will go beyond that. <laughs> I need really to learn something out of that. Things like that. That's really deep learning. Not only your eyes enjoying, but also your brain will work. You get the point? So I really love brain exercises or men, mental puzzles or like that, especially in Facebook. I will always look at it, things like that, if the questions goes like that. <laughs> Rather than watching, you know, tech talk that's only dancing and just like Akadama and doing something like, I'll never gain for that. I will never be enjoyed for that. Okay, for me, it's, it's futile. You know futile? For me, huh? I'm not telling it's you because we are, we are not the same in personality and character in the first place. For me, I don't like, okay, because it's shallow. You get the point? You know, meaning, meaning uh, you know, it's a waste of time. You get the point? So rather than I will go beyond that, things like that, research, reading, academics, information, entertainment, music, blah, 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 so and so, okay, the technical requirements for singing, vocal coaching, you know, the technical, you know, uh, learning about how to sing well. There's a lot of technique, how to use a staccato, how to use the decrescendo, how to use the crescendo, how to use dynamics. Singing is not like all about when you sing, it's enough. You have to do the technical. Okay, so if you really learn the technicals, then you could, you could perform a lot of singing style. And you have really the different types of voices. Just like me, I'm a man, but I can sing a women's song. 
Okay, but if you don't have the skill for that, you cannot really shift your voice to something different in another level. Anybody can sing, but you know, the uniqueness is somewhat very, very seldom. Okay, you got the point. So that's why you, you need to go to the deeper, you know, technical requirements. And that is in singing. And in sports, you have also to go there. For example, I don't know the, the sport hockey. Then I also researched that. <laughs> oh, really? Things like that. I enjoyed a lot upon knowing the technical requirements of how to play a hockey. And that's sports. Things like that. Sometimes also I will go to... Uh, Sometimes also I will go to another topic also like uh, a chess or a gymnastic. Oh, there's a synchronized swimming, things like that, uh, that sports. And I will go to music, how to perform R&B, the rhythm and blues, things like that. Oh, really? Things like that, upon knowing that, researching that, uh, okay. And then sometimes I will go to trivia questions like this. The largest planet. Things like that, okay. The largest country, like that, okay. The seven wonders of the world, and the, you know, the largest university in the whole world, the largest library in the whole world. I am fan for that types of uh, reading, watching. I'm not on the, you know, I'm not too much on the joke, joke, joke in the Facebook. Sometimes I also watch if I am bored, but that is not really my center. Get the point? Okay, I need to vary. I don't watch full movies. I watch only short movies. Okay? Because, you know, it, was, uh, it will eat up my time all two hours, three hours by just one movie. I can do a lot of that one hour and two hours and other specializations, for example. But my weakness really, guys, is cooking. I don't study cooking. Okay, get the point? Um, I'm just watching, but I'm not really learning. What do you mean by that? Because when you learn, you need to uh, apply that. But if you're just watching it and gaining something and you did not apply, it looks like it will vanish later on in your brain. Because you did not apply that in the uh, real scenario, in the real life situation. You need to apply that. That's really the true learning. You get the point? That most of the times, guys, if it is really a true learning, it will never be lost into it from your brain. It will remain. You get the point? For example, if you are learning what is an acceleration, even though you studied that in your elementary level, up to now, if you are still 50 years old, you can still remember that acceleration is equal to the velocity over time. But if you don't learn that in your heart, you're just learning that because you need a good grade to compete anybody else and in order to impress your parents because they pay tuition to you then it's not a true learning because a true learning is packed for the rest of your life until your last breath you get that that's real the learning we have learning through experience we have the learning through academics things like that but it's easy to apply the the experience because experience is the best teacher, right? But how about the academics? There's a lot of academics that can save you so that you will not be threatened by different diseases or so that you will not be in trouble, so that you will not be in harm in the real life scenario or in the real life situation, okay? So you can also learn from that, okay? For example, if there is a, a, an apple, for example, in the upside, and then, that is very loose, then you have to remember the law of Isaac Newton, the law of motion, right? Things like, oh, okay, so you will be alerted. Oh, so you will take an extra distance. You will, you need to step back from the hazards, things like that. So these are really academics, okay? Because this is not yet encountered so many times. That is experience. I can. Experience is the best teacher because you experience that for so many times and you learn now. But then if it is highly academic, there are situations that it's happening to you on the spot. You get the point and you can only try to have that on the spot also by having calculation in your brain. Things like that. You need to anticipate. It's your, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, IQ that, that matters there. Common sense or whatever. How, how can you call that? Because, you know, common sense is part of academics. 
you just depend because it is a uh, you know uh, common sense meaning motor skills of your brain okay you get the point so if you don't have the the good common sense so the rest will be you know sloppy sloppy and you know <laughs> what will be sloppy <laughs> meaning being careless like that and then disorganized and systematic that is sloppy s l o p p y another term of being careless okay disorganized and systematic and without any arrangement things like that okay you get the point ganon so wala siya ang atong 10 lang sakta guys no actually i have 20 plus of idiomatic expressions then i plan that to add improve day by day so that things like that because i found out i need to to balance because you know idioms also are parts of speech you know this also category one category of an english language then i'm focusing more on the parts of speech i am weak in the figures of speech so i need to study a, a little bit about this also things like that okay then some of it i really encounter but not by heart also you get the point but not by the heart because you know some of this i discussed to you today it's not coming from my high school, from my elementary, from my college. It's just happening here now. So, but the only one I keep on remembering this is the rule of thumb, the benefit of a doubt, and then that's all. But most of them are really new to me because I studied, I read. Okay, so I'm not really that good in a figure of speech actually. Because I'm not also taking up education, by the way, major in English. I think so. But it depends on the person, right? You get the point. Paalang sa siya, no? Atong first part sa atong idiomatic expression. We have hit the hay, kill two birds in one time, break a leg, benefit of a doubt, rule of thumb, up in the air, costs an arm and a leg, hang in there, or hang in the air, then on the ball, then I could eat a horse. Okay. Now, when does this article V and A? Remember this. If the question in the future will say, list the two articles, your answer will be V, that, and A. There's no other articles in English language or in English subject. There are only two. Remember this in your brain. The and A and A. And a and an is slash because it depends on the vowel, on the constant you are using. For example, uh, an apple. Okay, you will never say a apple. Okay, because that is vowel. Okay, v o w e. Vowel. Vowel is not the vowel movement in your tai because that is vowel. B o w e l. This is v v. Vowel, okay. The sound is different. The other one is vowel, letter B. Okay, this v. So letter V, vowel. Okay, that the point. So if the pair of the article is a vowel letter, then you will say uh, use an. Okay, you will say an estimate, uh, an exquisite. You will never say a exquisite. It's not good wrong grammar. Okay. So why, how can you apply the the that? So for example, I will say uh, the the astronomical. So let's say, oh my gosh, it is correct. So you said the astronomical. The, why you will never say the astronomical? Okay. So actually, guys, there's a rule for that, but sometimes the rule will be broken. <laughs> broken talaga. Okay. Will be uh, not followed uh, because. It depends on the the sound effect. If it is awkward, not good to listen. For example, uh, airplane. Huh? It is the or the the airplane or the the airplane. So think. Oh, for example, uh, the English or the English. So. The rule actually is uh, saying that if it is a vowel, you need to use the. But if it is a consonant, you will use the. But sometimes, due to the, the sound it produces, it will not be good to use. And it's acceptable also. For example, uh, 
say the apple. That's actually that is the apple, not the apple. For example, on yeah, for the purpose of discussion. But it looks like it's okay to use, right? But actually, the the perfect usage or utilization is the apple, not the apple. And also, the airplane, not the airplane. But sometimes we forget this, you know, because it's like a minor but for those who are linguistics and those who are really eloquent they will understand that you are using the wrong thing you get the point so and if, and also if we're trying to face an examination related to english because it's not all the time to keep on thinking about this you get the point okay for example Anna, so, uh, flower that or the the h e ha i mean so we can say that's the, the flower, because F is consonant, not vowel. Okay. Kani, apocalypse. What is an apocalypse? An apocalypse is a total destruction and devastation when the world ends. So that is in the last part of the Old, no, New Testament of our Lord God created in the doctrine of the Bible, the Book of Life. It's reflected in the apocalypse, the total destruction and devastation of the whole world. And then when every people uh, die and there's another life, and that is a judgment day. Things like that by our Lord Almighty, things like God Almighty, things like that. That is the term apocalypse. Okay, so nobody will remain. All will be under destruction. You get the point? Things like that. And that is only for our Christian and Catholic faith because there's no, another interpretation with other religion also. Because the belief really acquires billions of interpretations. That's why a lot of religions created because the comprehension is an issue. A lot of comprehension in one context. Just like uh, one photo have paints a thousand interpretation. Things like that. You get the point. That's the reason there's so many religions in the world because of interpretation. And after the interpretation, belief comes in faith comes in that's why we don't have to fight about religion because it's based on interpretation you get the point somebody will say they are true other will say they are also true and which of them are really true nobody really judge the reality based on one religion it's only almighty god can say which among them are true Oh, because it's based on interpretation. You get the point? Ganon. So, we will never tackle religion because it will never end. We will keep on talking, talking, talking. Let's review who make the universe, who make the asteroids, who make the Almighty God, and muhunong nata. Because Almighty God is just like a magic. You get the point? Chow! Almighty God comes in. And who make the Almighty God? Can you answer? No more. So, it's better to stop asking about anything in which there's no ending infinite okay you know what i mean if you try to dig the, the understanding in a very uh, wide manner you can never really extract the source of all okay it, it looks like uh oh how can i explain this <laughs> things like that so it's better not to deal with that as long as we have the belief then bingo that's it you got the point so it matters of interpretations really you get the point so i think all religions are correct it depends only for how you interpret that one you get the point so it matters on how you convert your actions in your beliefs you get the point because if you have this belief and you keep uh, practicing the, the opposite of the belief then it's futile it's useless for example if you're praying 10 times and then if you're praying 10 times and then by just one very big mistake, then your 10, 10 times of prayers will be lost. Meaningless. So uh, the better you have one prayer, the one prayer, but this guy is not doing a mistake. So you, you know the story. So this is on also my interpretation, but the other guy also will interpret in another way around. And another guy also will interpret in another way around. And another guy also will interpret in another way around. So we, we don't have the same consensus. We don't have the same agreement in one particular topic. Because it cannot be measured by that. 
it cannot be measured by uh, you know interpretation but it can be measured by belief and faith you get the point but interpretation is the first requirement to have the belief and our faith you get the point things like that okay our you know our biblical philosophers our theologists who studied a lot about the religion there are so many okay they are diverse also from different religions also okay then they collaborated with each other they are not quarreling with each other in the past okay it's only in the present times that they are quarreling about we are the true religion blah 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 and they kill someone over the other because we are the true like that blah 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 so and so in the past there's no you know war regarding this religion okay you get the point because they are not concentrating too much in the religion they're concentrating too much on the discovery things like the scientific discovery things like that though they have also the faith but they are not focusing on that you get the point come on that's the reason also that some scientists will vow and pray if they cannot prove their discoveries to be true even though how hard they tried in their experimentation they always fail and then they will ask themselves what makes me feel all the time and then they will pray they will kneel and pray to the almighty god see even though they don't have the faith but they will pray suddenly because they cannot really have all by one setting blah blah blah, blah. there are also scientists like that okay because I read a lot of the scientists, blah, 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 so and so. You get the point? Okay. Kaya ako mabuti, guys. Magstabi ko sa una, guys. It's not enough good nga mo. Sige lang tag-solve. Solve. Okay? I really go deeper sa history, things like that. Who are the, the key players of this particular scientific theory? Of this particular scientific law? So, so muna siya, guys, na... If you have this ability, it would help you a lot to, you know, excel in different examinations, whether it is difficult or not, or average. If you have this, you know, this is not a talent, this is, a, you know, initiative, meaning giving time, giving passion to the per because you want to learn. Because actually, guys, there's no intelligent and bogo for me, huh? We have equal opportunity to learn. The only difference is our focus inclination time and preference ang hilig lang yun ang diferensya because there are also people love to learn a lot but they don't initiate to study things like that they'll just love watching uh, genius people in tv like that and they keep insulting anybody else they love insulting a lot okay but they themselves they are not brilliant they keep finding faults by other people but if we try to examine the way how they did it they cannot also usually fault finders people are not intelligent they're just loving to do it as they're happy you get the point because you know intellectual people are not into it because it's just a waste of time you are keep on correcting others mistakes blah 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 so and so so it's not like that right you focus to yourself for your own growth of improvement and at the same time you'll be able to share your information to other people to motivate them what you've achieved and to be relevant in the community and in the society as well you know to be optimistic we really need people who are on optimism <laughs> optimism or have invoke positivity in their life always looking for the positive outlook in their life rather than to those toxic people that pretending to be brilliant and smart but actually it's not you get the point and you can really sense that in the social media okay the way how they comment it looks like like blah 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 and you you look at other words oh my gosh and then but then if you try to extrapolate oh wala na. If you say something, I know, okay? And then you need to ignore because it's a waste of time. You get the point, things like that go to the most substantial and beneficial and vital, you know, topics just like this or teaching anybody else so that we will know because, you know, we need to spread <laughs> a substantial information to change the world for the better. Come on. So that we can have a beautiful and a better place to live in. Come on. Right. We will do things remarkably beautiful, outstanding, so that we can improve our personal growth in learning. Okay? Ganon! Ganon, diba? Nakakalawa. See you later. If you like this video, you can comment down below in the comment section. 
you can also subscribe and rate the channel if you want and then if you are already subscribed then i will be happy for that and then you can also invite another people if you want to subscribe my channel <laughs> so very fast right okay things like that so i'm grateful really and bye bye god bless everybody see you later remember that jesus loves us bye bye Oh, di ba mga palagingging? Natapos na rin ako sa akong himayang nahunlak. Charot. Okay. Nahunlak, Jude.